You're wearing very sad colors for a thing about love. Well, love is sad. <laughs> Hi, we're Jackie and Bobby with Ascension Presents, and today we're going to talk about how do you know you're in love? It's the thing we are most made for, most designed for, we most crave. It's on just about every song on the radio it has something to do with love gone right or gone wrong. So how do I know I'm actually in that state of love? And if you're asking this question, we're kind of assuming if you're Googling, like, how do I know I'm in love? It, it means you're in a relationship. You're, you're asking, the question kind of you're asking is, am I... Is this the person I'm going to marry? Like, how do I know this is real? Because when we say love, again, love is not just a feeling because we've all had that experience where we have felt in love and the relationship has gone very wrong or sour or the, the person we thought we were dating did not end up being the person we had and the idea in our head. So how do I know I'm in love? Well, the Greeks used four words for love. The first one was storge, which- Which, which is like the lowest level attachment. There's philia, which is the friendship type love. Like, again, I love this guy like a brother, or I love this, this girl as a sister. And then there's the eros layer of love, which is, again, the, the passionate love. That, that's kind of what we associate sometimes with, like, love when, you know, we're, we're drawn by beauty. We're, we, we're pierced by that ache of beauty. We see a beautiful person. We see a beautiful sunset. Like it Makes your heart swell. That's eros, you know? which is yeah. a good thing, but that's not the end point of love because eros is a, a fast burn and it can also quickly go out. Yeah. The highest form is agape love, which is really demonstrated in the Christian way of life. Uh, no greater love than this than to lay down your life for a friend. That's John 15, 13, the model of Christ that I love you above myself. So that's the litmus test of like, does this person love me more than themselves? And the hard thing is not just in a flowery, romantic, poetic way, which is usually how a lot of these relationships you know we're all we're all human we're all in it they start out very passionate and very like we're up till three in the morning talking to this person and it feels great i mean that's the thing is like the feelings of love are wonderful and some people were some people are addicted to that feeling of love right and they'll chase that feeling but if you're asking the question am i in love how do i know i'm in love um it can't just be based on the feeling because those feelings are very fleeting they go away and they have to be sustained by a deeper type of love, which is what Pope John Paul, before he was the Pope, he wrote a book called Love and Responsibility. He talks about how this feeling of love needs to be drawn into a deeper type of love. Right, uh, the value of the person, uh, he writes, is Carol Wojtyla, the future of St. John Paul II. The value of that person is bound up with the whole being of the person, not with his or her sex. Sex is only an attribute of the being Love demands integration. We come together, body and soul. It is an affirmation of the person or else it is not love at all. Meaning, hold on, so meaning that it's not just my feelings, it's not just our sexual chemistry because when you read magazines like like Cosmo, that's all they're talking about. They're just talking about the sexual chemistry and it's like, well, but take that away. What about when you're not having that sexual chemistry? Like when you're not having sex, when you're not doing anything sexual and what's there? Do you actually like the person or are you in love with the, what they can give you, the feelings they can give you, or are you in love with the idea of the person? Keep reading, this is very good. Yes, honey. It is only love when it is directed to the person uh, that is love. The authentic commitment of the free will of one person resulting from the truth about another person. It is again, receiving and seeing the truth of that person, not who I think they are, not who I want them to be, not who I think I'm gonna change them into. I see the truth of the person, as a priest once told me, the reality should be better than the romance. Love is not just a cold legalism, like I will lay my life down for you, I guess. It's like, I'm choosing to love you even though I don't really have feelings for you. Like that's, that's, not that's, the, that's the wrong extreme of it. There should be passion. There should be that, that John Paul called it the raw sentiment of love, the first like kind of, the first, um, Kind it's of like a, the stuff of love. The material yeah. should be that, that excitement to see the other person and to give them gifts and to spend time with them. But that's not love in and of itself. That's the starting point. It should be able to see the truth of the other person. And that's also a process. Yeah. That's not just a one like one day I, I, I'm in full love. I know fully what it is to, to love this person and, and whatever. It's a process because when everyone is healthy and finances are good, Love is easier than when someone loses a job or there's cancer or a disease. And when yeah. really like when the inconveniences of life show up, that's when love takes root. That's when, you know, instead of just heading for the door, well, I guess it wasn't love or I guess we stopped. Oh, I don't feel it anymore. I don't feel you it. Know? Therefore, I, you know, that then it was never love. 
you know it yeah. was it got out of the starting gate but it didn't finish the race like love has to when the times get tough that's where love takes roots and says i'm inconvenienced but you know what you're more important than than me right now you are more important than my desires or my preferences if you are sexually active in a relationship right now and you want to know if you are actually in love take that component out take the sexual part of it out and and live live a life of or live a relationship with chastity and then you will see what is really there you'll see like do we actually have a friendship can we actually talk about things or basically is our whole relationship centered around sex is it all centered around this physical chemistry because that's gonna that's gonna go away i can't tell you how many people have gotten divorced like oh the chemistry just after 10 years it went away it's like well because all you had was the chemistry you didn't have a friendship you didn't have a deeper form of love and agape love so yeah if you're not growing deeper roots and the thing is when you grow deeper roots the romance continues to bloom it's like it's like I garden, and so it's like when you when you keep taking care of like a rose, and the and the, the roots grow deeper. Sometimes you got to prune it, but then there, the, there's more flowers. So it's like real love sometimes is painful, it's sacrificial, but then the romance is going to bloom from that deeper love. John Paul writes, love cannot be founded on uh, sentiment alone. So it, it isn't just the feeling alone. We're called to again um, reclaim that passion, not just go on cold autopilot as the years and, and time goes on, but to again prune as necessary to keep conversations going, to still date one another, um, to keep 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 it going. Um, and he says too that we see here that the desire to use another person is fundamentally incompatible with love. So, do I know I'm in love? Well, is the other person using me? Am or I just, am I using them? Or am I using them? Is this for emotional or physical pleasure? Because you know? that's a big. That's not love. That's just it's the use. use. Um, yeah. Now again, those relationships can be pruned. That can arrive at a place of love, but there's got to be some hard discernment and hard conversations to arrive there, so that love can evolve and take bloom. But you got to be willing to be pruned and allow God to prune you in the process. Be patient. God is the author of all love. God wants to love you first before we extend that love to others. So allow God to love you. Allow Christ to um, make manifest the love and healing he wants to, to give you so that you can rightfully love others and be loved in return. Yeah, it's in the first John. We only know how to love because he has loved us first. So we only know how to love with agape sacrificial love because he's the one that showed us what that love looks like. So exactly, let yourself be loved by him, the author of love, and it will allow you to love others the way you're called to. From all of us at Ascension Presents, God bless. We'll see you next time.